Welcome everybody. We are, we are back with our students from the Baylor College of Medicine uh, Academy at Ryan. The same group that we interviewed two years ago and back then you saw us in the foyer of the Research Institute. We are still in the Research Institute building but today we are in a specially designed hybrid suite uh, which is a radiology suite which contains uh, the latest technology that, that that is available uh, today in modern medicine uh, for imaging and for the performance of advanced interventional techniques. Now, this is actually particularly interesting because this room that you see over here contains the latest technology and is only used for the purposes of research and experimentation, not for human work. We use the knowledge that we gain here to apply it to our patients to improve what we do for them. I'm here with Farooq Siddiqui, with Camille Ofolue, and with Noura Al Hamadani. So wonderful, wonderful students, and, uh, and we'll be interviewing them in just a moment. I'm here with Noura Al Hamadani, uh, who is a lovely young uh, girl that I interviewed two years ago at Pumps and Pipes. Uh, the interview that we did at that time is on our website, pumpsandpipes.com, and the purpose today was to really catch up with these kids and see where they are two years from now. So, Nora, welcome back. Thank you. It's re I'm really glad to be here. Wonderful, wonderful. And you're here with your mother today. Yes. And that's wonderful. And yeah. I know she's very proud of you because she's, she's looking at us right there and she's smiling. Yeah. I know she is. Yeah, good. So two years ago when we spoke, you, uh, uh, you told me that uh, you were interested in becoming a surgeon of some kind. You mentioned possibly a neurosurgeon, possibly cardiovascular surgeon, but you weren't sure. Uh, how have things moved on? Where are you today? Well, after the whole pumps and pipes thing, um, I finished you know, the neuroscience class and that was really fun. We got to dissect a lot of things and interact with all these different parts of the body and like different animals. And then in seventh grade, I actually took a health science class and we got to like learn about all types of the body, the body systems and focus on you know each different part. And I felt like the respiratory system was the most, that was like really interesting to me whenever we were learning about it. So right now I'm kind of like leaning towards becoming a pulmonary surgeon because I think it's like so different than just becoming like a cardio surgeon, which we have a lot of those. I just wanted to do something different. Right. Well, that's, that's very interesting, and you, you may not know this, but in fact, in this country and most other countries, if you want to be a specialist in lung surgery, you have to actually learn how to do heart surgery. And then you, once, you've done, once you've learned how to do heart and lung surgery, you can specialize in one or the other. But that's, that's wonderful that you want to do that, because you're right. There aren't as many people that go into that as go into heart surgery. Now, tell me a little bit about your decision to become um, a physician, a doctor in the first place? Well, and the, I mean, I've been wanting to be a doctor ever since I was like in third grade, actually. My mom is a physician, and I think that's like one of the things that really inspire me. And since third grade, um, I actually, we like started to getting to the basics of like science and stuff. And I feel like whenever we learned about the human anatomy, that was just so different. I feel like helping lives and saving lives would be like, you know, becoming a superhero. So I, that was just like so exciting to me from the beginning. Right, right. So you're at the uh, uh, Baylor College of Medicine Academy at Ryan, and it's wonderful that we have schools like this that promote science, technology, engineering, and medicine. Um, but I'm gonna ask you a question that's not an easy one, and just tell me what you think, okay? There are some people who feel that removing or reducing the amount of exposure that you have to the liberal arts, whether in high school or in college, is not such a good thing. Um, in Australia, for example, they have just decided that in high school, they're going to eliminate, um, there's a plan to eliminate um, teaching history, and they're going to substitute coding classes instead, computer coding classes. What do you think about that? Well, I don't think that's probably the right thing to do, even though like some schools want to focus on medicine and computer science skills that, you know, that help the brain think and all of that. But having like history and like all those other liberal like classes, I feel like that's another like part that's inspiring because as like 
honestly, I really do enjoy history classes and art classes and like all those other liberal classes because then sometimes whenever your like math classes or science classes get too hard, you can focus on hard. You can get you can focus on something else that will kind of you know be something different. Because I mean, like even though some people just want to pursue in science or math, it's nice to sometimes just like go off and study and look at different types of subjects and be exposed to everything. So because honestly, at this point, I might not become a a surgeon. I might do something completely different. That is all just depending on all the subjects that I'm going to be exposed to, and that's like a really big part that influences all, like children at like from the very start. So I don't think that's the right decision to do. Because that gives you the opportunity to uh, to be exposed uh, yes. to more things. Yes. Now, now you're in eighth grade now, yes. but you're getting ready to go into high school. Yes. So what what are you looking forward to? Which which high school and why? I am like really 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 looking forward to attending Debeke High School. Like if I get in, I will like that would be literally my dream come true because I mean, I've like I've seen like a lot of students from Debeke have come to our school and explained things about our school and I believe in 6th grade we took a trip to the Baylor College of Medicine where there were a few students that explained to us how the school works and it was like so impacting like they're getting like like I believe in like in 11th grade they get to actually go to the um they get to go to the hospital and see some of like procedures happening and at such a young age I feel like that would be so inspiring and fun to do and because I want to become a surgeon and focus on the medical field I feel like that would be such a great opportunity for me yeah Dr. Debeke was a real inspiration to me I'm going to turn the tables now and ask you to ask a few questions sure so Dr. Ramshandani I really wanted to ask you about um, things like what you have been doing to become such a successful surgeon so at first what college did you go to I went to college in England I went to the University of Cambridge and then I did my training in England before I came here and Dr. DeBakey uh, and I finished my training with Dr. DeBakey who was a great inspiration to me oh. so I've been here for 25 years in Houston Oh, well, that must have been really inspiring to work with like such an amazing doctor, of course. That's probably why you're now such an amazing and like influential doctor, really. Well, I don't know that I am, but he certainly was. And he was a, he was a very demanding and tough person to work for in a good way. Yeah. What, what he demanded was high standards. And so you are going to have to meet high standards to do what you want to do. But yeah. Sounds to me as if you know that already. Yes, yeah. of, of course. And another question I was curious about, where did you get your residency degree from for like becoming a doctor? Uh, in England, uh, from the same university that I went to college at. Um, but my, my training in cardiovascular surgery was done here under Dr. DeBakey. That's great. And from like, when did you like want to pursue a career in medicine and what really inspired you like along your path of becoming a doctor? Well, I'll tell you, when I was 14, I decided I wanted to become a heart surgeon and I don't know why. And I'm not sure it was the right age to make the decision, which is why I think that it's good for kids to have exposure to a wider variety of things. There, there are so many career opportunities out there and you really need to know more about what's available before you make a decision. Noura, I want to say that you're a wonderful young lady and I know why your mother is so proud of you and I wish you all the best of luck in your career. Thank you very much and it was really an honor to be interviewed by you and be here today. Thank you. That's very sweet of you. Thank you. I'm here with Camille Ofulwe who I first met two years ago, and I must tell you that uh, you were tremendously inspirational to me, and, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. Um, but at that time, um, when, when we spoke, um, you were and are still at the, at the Baylor College of Medicine Academy uh, at Ryan, um, one of the STEM students, and we were interested in, in, in the whole concept of, of STEM schools and steering kids towards that. And you had um, a very broad vision as to what as to what you wanted to be. You 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 thought being a doctor would be a good thing. You said an aeronautical engineer or aerospace. I, I forget that. And then you pointed out that 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 that, that childhood illness is is really a, a is a is a terrible problem, and um, and that uh, you you might you might become a pediatrician and find the cure to cancer and get that out of the way before you started tackling some real world problems. So that, in, I, I will tell you, that really inspired me because, because it told me that really you can dream and do whatever you want. 
So tell me how those dreams have progressed since that time. Okay, I still think I want to be a pediatrician. And then again, if that, well, I'm 13 right now, and so I might not want to do that, let's say, five years from now. But another field I'm looking into is cardiology. Last year in seventh grade, we took a class called scientific decision making. And at the end of the year, we started focusing on the heart. And I thought it was really cool how the heart works. And I just want to study that a little bit more. So. <laughs> Well, I'm a heart surgeon and I completely agree with you. We have discussions with our brain surgeon colleagues and there's no doubt that if the heart didn't work, nothing would work, right? Yes. <laughs> so you don't want to be an aerospace engineer anymore? I kind of like, I like the ground medicine when we're on land. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about, about your life and work at uh, Baylor College of Medicine Academy at Ryan. Tell me what it's like over there the school curriculum, the approach that, uh, that, the, that the teachers take towards you, um, and the students that you get to uh, work with? Um, in our first year, we had eight, eight classes, and now in eighth grade, we have five classes a day. We do block scheduling, and I think that's actually helped me more because we get a lot more time to focus on things like biotech. Instead of having like an hour class, we have an hour and 30 minutes so we can go further into the class. And as for the students, everyone's very nice and focused because we all have the same goals and like um, underhandedly, we all want to beat the person next to us. So we always have to be on our A game. And then the reason I think I keep coming back here is because every year something gets better. If we had like a problem last year, they fixed it this year and done like times 10. I want to hear from you uh, the role that your parents had in, 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 in um, directing you uh, in this path and what they do to help you uh, uh, achieve your goals today. My parents do everything in their power to help me get the goals that I want. Like in the past two years, I've done about eight sports and they've never said, oh no, don't do that anymore. They've always been like very confident in me and had their like put their faith in me and they've never said no to anything, like any goal I wanted to achieve. They've always been my main supporters. <laughs> eight sports sounds like a lot of sports. What's your favorite sport? Right now I'm doing ballet, so I hope I keep doing that longer than the rest of them. <laughs> yeah, you better be careful because your ankles can really take a beating in ballet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So how do you find the time to study and do sports and I mean what time do you go to bed? You, I only do ballet one once a week yeah. so I kind of like if I get the homework assignment that day I complete it that day and don't procrastinate. I think BCMA kind of pushes time management because the teacher's not going to slow down and give you the homework assignment again. He's like no you didn't turn it in it's going to be late tomorrow. So it's kind of like pushing me to have those time management skills that I'm going to need in college and high school and through life. Yeah. Well, Camille, I will tell you one thing. I'm very, very happy to be meeting you two years after we met, and I'm so delighted that you're on the path to what I know will be success. But I am disappointed in one thing. I'm disappointed that you no longer want to find the cure for cancer, <laughs> because I really thought that if there's one person who could do it, you could. It's been a great pleasure talking to you, Camille. Thank you. Great, thank you. Well, welcome all. Uh, again, uh, my name is Mahesh Ramchandani, cardiovascular surgeon at Houston Methodist. I'm, I'm here with Farooq Siddiqui. It was my great pleasure to interview you, Farooq, uh, Farooq, two years ago. And my word, have you grown. You're almost as tall as I am now. So that's, 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 that's a wonderful thing. And now, you're at the Baylor College of Medicine Academy at Ryan. And two years ago, you told me that you wanted to be a biomedical engineer. And you gave a really good explanation for why that was. You were interested in the biological sciences, you were interested in medicine, but you also like to tinker with your hands and you just like to make things and it's a great way to do, to do both. So where are you now two years after that? Well, I still really want to be a biomedical engineer and I've kind of expanded on, it, expanded on that because in sixth grade I took neuroscience and in seventh grade I took health science. Now in eighth grade I have elective which is robotics and I'm like like a really good robot, uh, um, I'm really good at programming the robots to do what I want them to do, to move stuff, to mo make their arms move up and down and like move precisely how I want them to. Well, you're sitting in a room over here surrounded by some of the latest medical technology that is available. 
And in fact, we do have a robot right behind you which allows us to perform um, robotic imaging of patients. So I think people like, like you are going to take this technology to the next level because there's definitely room for improvement. Now, tell me about, uh, do, you, do you make stuff at home? Uh, not really, but sometimes for a project, I sometimes use clay and stuff to yeah. make really cool stuff. Yeah. And like, I really use creative ideas to do my projects. So they all work together. And it's like, it's not like all the same. Like sometimes I use clay, sometimes styrofoam, and mostly like that. Yeah. So when did you make the decision to go into biomedical engineering? It's a very specific thing. In fifth grade, I, actually, I was actually very interested in, interested in engineering and medicine was also on my mind. And then I, I checked in an engineering tablet uh, that was in our uh, fifth grade class, and it talked about how medicine and engineering was actually very closely connected. And like I saw like, the first thing was biomedical engineering. I'm like, that's really, I really want to do that. And I've seen a lot of applications of it too. Now, your parents must have had a huge role in, in, uh, in shepherding you along the right way. Tell me about how important that role has been that your parents play in your life. I'm, I know that they're very proud of you. I can just look at you and I just know that that's the case. Yeah, my, my, my mom and dad are actually both doctors and they both wanted to be heart surgeons. My, da my dad is actually working as a doctor right now and like he's studying too, like a course of radio, a radiology. And it's very exciting to see him learn. And then, like, I help him with his um, learning too. And he helps me. And, like, it's just a really good um, connection between all three of us and my brothers too. Yeah. We all work together. And my brothers, they also want to be doctors. That's great. You never stop learning your entire life. You know, it's not that you finish school and you're done with that. It's just, it's a lifelong thing. And I'm glad you, uh, you understand that and your parents set that example for you. Now, High school is next, I guess. Have you thought about that? And then what about college? Any, any thoughts? For high school, DeBakey would be the obvious choice. Carnegie is like kind of a, somewhere in there, but DeBakey is definitely a very good, like a very prominent choice for me because it has, because it has a lot of um, medicine and maybe I could do engineering in there also, possibly. And for college, I really wanted to go to Rice University because of the engineering that I heard and like, I've been there before, actually, in a lot of competitions and stuff. I've seen it, and it's, it's like, I really want to learn there. It would be awesome to learn there. I've also been to Dubaiki. As part of my school, there's Camp Med. So in Dubaiki, we actually go there. We, get, we actually study for a week there in the summer, and it's really awesome. Tell me about the experience of life at the BCM Academy at Ryan. Your, 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 your staff, the faculty, the students that you get to interact with. The staff, the students, well, they're all very good. They're all specialists in their field, the staff. All of our teachers are very good. In sixth grade, we have um, two neuroscience teachers. In seventh grade, we have two health science teachers. One is actually um, working at DeBakey right now. And then in eighth grade, we have robotics, and like I said. And the students, they're very, um, like, like the other people, they're very good at learning. And they really want to learn, and like I can feel that I, I'm really happy there, and I really, and I can feel that everyone else wants to learn with me, and we connect stuff together in history and math and science and technology and everything. Well, it's a real inspiration to talk to you and others like you because when I do, and I see the ambition and the determination that you have. I know that our society, the future generation, our society is in safe hands. So I wish you, I wish you the best of luck and it's been a real, it's been a real pleasure.